Greetings, friend. I will show you why Niels Malta Christensen can solve New York Times hard Sudoku without any marking, including what strategy he employs to solve the orange cell. You can also solve along with Niels with my pause the video moments. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, look up here in block three. This is where Niels started. You got these twos in rows one and two. There's only one place for two in block one. And then he came down and saw that he had a six in block seven. Notice that there's only two possibilities for seven here. Excuse me, there's a six. Two possibilities for the six. And so that's a pointing pair. What it means is a six cannot be anywhere else along row eight. Okay, and Neil doesn't mark, he doesn't put colors. I'm doing the colors to help you out. But let's say like a six is one of those spots. They can't be in these three spots. Because of this six, a six can't be here. So you can solve for six right there like Niels did. And we'll remove that color. Welcome to Smart Hobbies. If you're new, subscribe. Tap the bell if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. He then notices these two sixes and this six. And he can solve for six up in block one. And then he looks and notices these one, three pairs. And this is very critical because this is probably one if not the hardest part of the whole puzzle it says that the ones and three are right there but he kind of misses at the moment that the nine is also in row seven and row nine along with the one and the three and so this brings us up to our first pause the video moment pause the video and see if you can solve for a one in block seven while i give you a few seconds congratulations if you spot it you understand how hidden triples work because you have the 139 here and here that puts a 139 limited to these three cells and since you have a three and a nine right there you can put a one right there in block seven and so this will put the three and the nine right here as a hidden pair and i'll keep that in blue because we're going to use that a little bit later in order to get good at solving without marks you do have to use your working memory to capture information like where pairs hidden pairs and pointing pairs are located in the puzzle. After doing that, he sees these two ones, solves for one in block one, and then takes this one with this one, says, oh, I have a pointing pair of ones here in block three because the one can't be up there, and knows that the ones cannot be here. And he has these two ones, so he can solve for one in block two. Really nice, I didn't show the, uh, didn't color the pointing pair there. After doing that, he does solve for a three right here because he sees this three is cutting up and does a little cross hatching. And that gives us a five, seven naked pair to finish block one. I'll put that in green because, again, Niels didn't mark it, but you do need to remember this. Just like you have to remember this three, nine in order to get the next couple of digits solved. And so this brings us up to our next pause the video moment. Pause the video and see if you can solve for a seven now here in block seven. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you did it. You're getting good at solving without marks like Niels. And just like for those of you who want to enjoy the show, because the seven has to be one of these cells, it can't be here. This seven can't be here. And this seven can't be here. And because of the three nine hidden pair, the seven can't be there. So you have to, you can only solve for seven right there. I cover hidden pairs and the other strategies needed to solve the New York Times hard Sudoku in my free Sudoku solving guide. Just click on the pinned comment below to download it today. And then Neil focuses on column three. A five can't go here because of this five and it can't be here because of this five. So you can solve for a five right there. And then these two fives means you can solve for a five in block nine. And then you can solve for five here because of the five in row five and the five from the pointy pair okay and with that five and this five and the five he made there you can solve for a five up there row four column eight uh, now he's able to disambiguate the three and the nine because he noticed he did mark that three right there so then this has to be the nine and that has to be the three and so now i'm going to remove the colors down low because we solved those and we're still going to work our way to this wonderful orange cell uh, do you ever solve puzzles notation free let me know in the comments. I'll answer every comment. I'd love to hear from you. And now what we can focus on is 
that you have these two nines. So we can solve for a nine in block four. And then we can solve for an eight because you have us a full house. You notice that eight of the nine digits are filled out in column three. So the only thing it misses is an eight. And then quickly using cross hatching, you see that you need a two and a four right here. Well, the four is right there. So Niels goes, nope, oh, there's the two and there's the four. That's a quick way of cross hatching to do those solves. And then he remembers you got the five and seven here. That's why I still have it colored. And he goes, the only digit missing in column one now is an eight. And now this brings us up to our next pause the video moment. And this is a tricky one. Pause the video and now see if you can disambiguate the five and the seven in block one. Well, I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spotted this. I was really impressed when Niels did it in the video. What you have to notice is the limitations in the fives. Okay, you got these fives here and the fives here, which means that the fives in block two and block three are limited to rows two and three. So this makes what I call a mini X-wing, or Simon Anthony calls it. And what it means is the fives, since they're limited to those two rows in block two and three, a five has to be somewhere in row one. It's going to be in row one in block one. So this has to be your five. Whenever you have one possibility, it's going to be a claiming single. So we can solve that for a five. If you have two possibilities, if this was not a six, then you could have a claiming pair. And if the four wasn't there, you'd have, you know, claiming triple. So we're able to solve that five right here and solve this cell for a seven. If you see value in my analysis, please consider buying me a coffee or just simply click on the super thanks below on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. Now let's remove the colors and see how Niels solved the orange cell. Okay, and this brings us up to our last pause the video moment. All right, Niels, use a similar strategy that I just showed you to solve this cell in block five. So pause the video and see if you can solve the orange cell in block five while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. You're really good at finding these hidden singles. Those of you who just want to enjoy the show, you have a nine right here, so nine can't be in this cell. You can put a nine right here, can't be in this cell. So the only place for a nine in row four is the orange cell. And so this is the key, and it's a little hard to, find, to see. It is a form of finding hidden singles. That's what cross hatching is. When Niels did the two and the four here, he just looked and saw, okay, I need a two and a four. That can't be a four. The only place for a four is right here. So that's a quick solve. The other way to do the solving for a hidden single is you would look across a row or column and see, you know, where the digit is and where uh, the only place remaining for it can be. And so in this case with the nines, you look individually nine here, nine there. It's a little bit harder to do, but if you can do this part to find these hidden singles, you're going to get a lot further on with your solving. And I think Niels is very good at this. Thank you so much, Niels, for letting me analyze one of your solves. And I'll put a link to Niels' channel below so you can check it out. So let's remove that orange color and see where Niels goes from here. From here, he looks for restrictions in row four and says, oh, I need an eight and a three. He sees this eight. So they will solve for the three there and the eight there. And then he starts following the eights and says, okay, I got restrictions with these eights. I can solve for an eight there. And then in block eight, I can solve for an eight. And then he switches over to the fours. And this is kind of cool because he says, you know, because of this four, I have two possibilities for four in block eight. So that's another pointing pair. So four can't be here. Four here means it can't be there. And you have this four. So he's able to solve for four up in block two. And then that, when you see this, just quickly go to the next salt, like Niels did. Those two fours in this four means there's only one place for a four in block three. And then he looks across and says, I can need a five and a nine. I see the nine right there. So there's your five and there's your nine. Now he's back to the cross hatching. So that working memory is good for keeping up like two to three sets of pairs like you saw. And then once you can quickly get back to cross hatching, you're going to get a lot more digits and make this puzzle a little bit less complicated. Now he solves this nine here. Notice there's these nines. He can solve for a nine in block six. And then these nines and this nine can solve for a nine in block two. And that's what he did. 
and then he looks uh, where a five can be again seeing that he has these two fives solve for five in column nine and then he looks for where a one can be and notices again that with these two ones and this one there's only one place for a one in column nine and then he does a little cross hatching gets this one up here in block three and then he uses this three seven naked pair to solve the rest of column eight using what i call my neat naked triple trick okay so i'll call these in blue that represents a three and a seven and so what you look for is we need a two four and an eight and three is three cells he has a four and an eight right here and then the eight repeated right there whenever you have two to three missing candidates looking into one of the cells and then one of those is repeating another you can solve all three right away because we know this has to be the two the eight can only go here and this last digit has to be the four all right i'm going to keep this in blue because neil does remember that this is a three seven naked pair and he moves on and finishes up row nine and then block seven with the two and the four right there then he looks in block eight here and says okay that can be a two with these twos you solve for a two right there and he's looking at column five going in a six and a three the six has to be there and because the threes are right there and he solves for three up there in block two and then he switches over and says oh yep i remember this was a three and a seven so that's got to be your seven that's got to be your three and we're going to remove those colors and then he's able to solve up here in block two for where the seven can be and then the last digit in row block two is a six all right where do we go next you want to look for the area of greatest restriction in this case he didn't finish block eight there's only one cell missing learn how to solve individual cells quicker with this tutorial okay so we're going to solve for the four in block eight and now the only digit missing in column six is a seven and then we can do a little bit more and once you see the seven here you can cross hatch and solve for the seven in block six and then the seven's missing along with the two down here so we can do the two and the seven right there bring it up here he notices that there's an eight missing so he solves for the eight the last digit is a six cuts that across and goes yep i don't have a six in block five and the last digit is a three watch this next video to see how i analyze one of harold nolte's notation free solves Thank you so much for watching.